Hey, thanks for joining me. This is my indie devlog. My name is Ben and I'm making my first game in Unity. And this is a bit of an update. Just wanted to say shout out to Eagle for giving me the kick up the, the butt to uh, do this video. Been meaning to do it for a while, but actually haven't. And there's been a lot of updates actually. So I'm going to start back in November last year when I paused my Unity build, uh, my Unity game. Partly because I was going off the rails a bit with it. I I've always had ideas and you know um, plans of what I want to do, but just kept getting derailed. And then I stumbled onto uh, GB Studio, uh, a Game Boy engine for making games. And I kind of thought it'd be really cool just to a make a game for the Game Boy. Um, that's been a bit of a childhood fantasy to some degree. Um, that'd be pretty sweet doing that. And B like maybe the restrictions of the hardware would actually make me just like focus on what I actually want my game to play like even though it's in 2D not 3D so I spent a couple of months developing a game for the Game Boy uh, which meant I had to write my script properly and really 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 focus it onto um, the the real narrative like get rid of all the, the fancy bull stuff and all these minor little stories just focus on the on the actual storyline keep the characters down to a minimum and just really focus on that. So I did that and I uh, that took a, took a while actually, it took a, as you can imagine, like writing a, a script or a story. It took a good few uh, attempts to, to get it to a point where I was like happy. It's like, okay, I've got a beginning, middle and end. I've got two characters, ah, three characters, maybe four, depending on how you look at it. And um, it all coherently hangs together and actually tells a fairly interesting story, like a nice sci-fi twist. There's a couple of twists in it, which um, I'm happy with. So that was the first stage. Was like, okay, well, I've now got my story, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have a little play this GB Studio and see what it can and can't do. I know it can do narrative, um, and a whole host of problems came from there on in. <laughs> so obviously, I, I was aware of the restrictions of the Game Boy, but made the, being my first foray into Game Boy making, I didn't realize quite how challenging it was going to be from the art to the audio, to the limited characters you can really fit on screen before it starts getting messy. So my scripts I really, really then had to go back to and, and narrow it down even more. I think I could only have like 16 characters per line, three lines per screen, um, per prompt before it started getting like messy and yeah. So that was a good exercise because it, made, it forced me to then look at my story and again, just strip it right back to its bare essentials. Really use the thesaurus to find words that would um, cover a couple of words in one word, if that makes sense. Um, and I finally, yeah, I got the script going, got the game going, got some mechanics in place. I kept it, I kind of wanted it to be a prototype um, of a game, really. More sort of for my own benefit of just like cementing where I want to go for the Unity build when I get there. So I did that. Um... And the way I, I explained it to my mate Dan was actually I look at this Game Boy game as a, a demake of my Unity game if my Uni <laughs> Unity game existed and was complete. Um, but I've only like in the Game Boy versions only like two nightmares, two, three or four puzzles, uh, the kind of physical puzzles. I, I guess is the way to describe them. You know, um, like you, uh, physical. I don't know if that's the right word. But like what would happen in real life, um, th those type of puzzles. Anyway, yeah, whatever. So I did, um, did that, and I'm happy to say, really, really happy to say, <laughs> after a lot of back and forth and tweaking and whatever to my game, I actually got it. And here it is, eesh, on an actual Game Boy cartridge, which is phenomenal. You can plug it into the Game Boy. Give it. So it goes straight through the bootloader into my game as if it was a normal cartridge. <laughs> and there's that funky little tune that we'll all expect to hear in the charts pretty soon, I'm sure. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I, I, just, I just love the fact I've got a cartridge. It, it, I had, where is it? Throughout my development, I was using my, my ROM cart, one of these. So I could test the ROM, um, obviously, before buying the cartridge. 
And when you compare the two, I mean, yeah, they kind of look the same as well because they're both transparent. Um, but knowing that this is just flash with my game and go straight from the bootloader into my game, whereas with you know this, I was always having to um, launch the game from the sub menu. Oh, I didn't want that in there. Um, yeah, so wicked. I've got my own cartridge. I've got three copies. I'm going to give give one away, I think. Um, I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with one of them. One of them I've already uh, I've already got a a purpose in mind for that one, and one I'm going to keep. And the one that I've got the perp, uh, the one that I'm planning to do, I'll do a video on that at another point once I've actually actually done that part. I don't I don't want to give that away yet because um, I think it's quite a unique idea, uh, and you know whatever. Um, also, as part of this creating my game for the Game Boy. I turn it into a book, a small little book, a small little visual book, taking screenshots from the game, which actually looks kind of cool with the, uh, uh, find a better image. Yeah, you, so, so a lot of these pictures I took, used my Game Boy camera, edited them a little bit in um, a Sprite. I put a lot more context around the story as well because it's a book now so I could afford to do that and I had to do it because um, actually didn't make any sense really if you just without the context of the scene um, it made sense in the game but when you put it onto the pages of a book there needed to be a bit more so there's also going to be a little book coming out shortly and uh, to support the game the game is also on itch if anyone wants to download it the ROMs on there or you can play it for free on itch.io just search for broken mind so yeah there's a few it's been an interesting, say, interesting, challenging couple of months while I get this all sorted, and I'm extremely happy and satisfied with the outcome. And phase three, as I'm calling it. Oh yeah, I'm just waiting for the the actual books to. These are the proof ones. I'm waiting for the the Amazon to approve the the book and get the proper prints. Then I'm going to phase three, which is the the bit I'll do a video on later. So that took me to the beginning of last week, at which point I got itchy fingers and thought, oh, let me just launch my Unity build and see where I stand with that. But before I launched it, I thought, actually, I don't want to see it. I just want to start again from scratch, rebuilding it. With all the learnings that I've gathered in the last two years and with the sort of idea, all the fundamentals now in place on a from the Game Boy and transferring those fundamentals into 3D. Cheers. Ooh. So, this is where I'm at. And I, I literally just stopped development to do this video because um, Eagle sort of reminded me that I haven't done a vid video for a while. So we'll see how we get on with this. But in, this week, I, I, I'm... I've been very, very happy with uh, progress. So, f bearing in mind this this game didn't exist uh, last week because I started it from scratch. Performance is good. I've got the island. You can move around. Probably going to change the um, the first person player that. Are... I'm going to tweak this a bit, but you can move around. You can pick up objects. You can throw objects. There's a reason now for picking up objects as well because you can use them to climb up things. Uh, plus you can just throw them around because it's fun. They, I've got the like for anyone who's, who's read. Oh, here we haven't read, but anyone who's played the Broken Mind, the Game Boy game, knows that you start off waking up in the middle of the night. Your daughter gets uh, kidnapped by a strange being. You go through a portal. You end up in a lake, drowning. Then you arrive on an island. I've not done any of that yet. I'm thinking that might just be a uh, form. I was going to say full motion video, but uh, what do you call it? <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. You won't play that part. You'll watch it in the game, I think. And then, uh, so I've started from the point where you arrive on the island. So I've got the narrative system working now. I had to fix that because the narrative wouldn't disappear after it reached the the end. So there was a bit of a problem there. Uh, what have we got? We got some radio towers in, which are now. I've 
think they're going to be, there's a few of them spread around the island, they're going to be in replace of the acoustic mirrors from the Game Boy version, just because I can't find a 3D model of the acoustic mirrors. Maybe over time I might try Blender and give it a go myself and see how I get on with that, but for now they're going to be towers. We've got the portal, which takes you to the hospital, which gives you a bit of uh, narrative from your wife, bearing in mind you're in, um, on the island, you're in a coma. So you go through these portals, you, you end up in the hospital as a sort of ghost, listening to your wife and seeing what she's going through. Got the power station at the top here. There's a gate down the bottom here where you need to get a key and a to unlock, unlock this glorious looking black uh, gate. Uh, and a white fence stops you entering unless you climb over the top here <laughs> and carry on your merry way up to the power station. In the power station, I've got the first... There's a button in there basically at the moment that you press. That's going to be way more challenging. There's going to be a puzzle element to it. Um, actually, what I'm going to do, just quickly, because it's all dark, isn't it? Let's put the daylight on. Yeah, so you, um, you can go in here. Again, this is all very, very placeholder. My plan at the moment is just to get the mechanics in place. Forget about what everything looks like. Just pull it, pull it somewhere um, and get the flow. So this, where is it? Where are we? Down here. This little button here will actually be on the on the Game Boy version. You have to control the coolant levels for the power station to enable the power to come back on. And I'm going to do something similar for each of these these towers. Each tower relates to one of the radio stations with a matching color light. And when you activate the power for one of these chimneys, it powers the radio station which enables a portal to open and there's a bit more story so yeah that's where I was and then what I was actually doing was working on the part where you've been to the hospital for the first time you've met your wife you've you've understood now that you're in a coma you come out of the portal everything's dark and moody and this happens Oh, actually, stop, stop, stop. It might be in full screen, but let's have a look. No, it's not. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's change that to maximize. Get rid of the stats for a second. And this is this is a new part, actually. So on the Game Boy version, when you come out the portals, you, you enable a... Um, Sorry, you, you, you went to like the nightmare stages, which are like these puzzle areas. Doesn't I don't I think I'm not convinced it's going to work in 3D. So I thought I'd try something different, and this is what I'm trying at the moment. Whether or not this will stay, I don't know. But these these orbs fall to the ground like a nice alien invasion. Uh, bearing in mind the, the portal should be closed by now, really. So you've woken up, be like, ah, shit, what's going on? Everything's dark. All these things are falling from the sky. This is what they look like at the moment. You collect them. And they're spread over the island. And what you won't see, because it's very gradual, but they're actually bringing light back to the island. And this is kind of sort of, in my mind, is sort of playing on the fact that you're, you're trying to escape the darkness. You know, you're, you're in that coma, you want... You want to get out, uh, and these these fragments that you're collecting are, are bringing the daylight back. Uh, so it is, it is getting lighter, and we can go around and collect more of those. And again, this is, I'm just trialing this bit out. But what I was working on right before I started videoing this was this dude over here. So to make this more challenging, you know, rather than just going around and collecting them, uh, I'm trying to avoid guns and shooting. Uh, so more like being hunted. There's going to be this, these weird alien things that also come down with these cubes. Maybe they're after the cubes as well. Maybe they're guarding something, searching, but they walk around. And the idea is you're going to need to collect these without them catching you or seeing you. And if they see you, they come charging towards you and you die. Or you, you, you start again. Don't die. Uh, this is the bit. 
this guy is doing his patrol, but he's not actually responding to me at the moment, which is what I was trying to figure out just before this. I think I might have him quite tall. So you can see him from afar. They've got these, these, I've, yeah, they've got the flare eyes, which I really like. Um, Cause I think from a distance, you you can quite easily mistake them for the fragments and you might go charging in. Oh, oh, look, look, go, get, go get that fragment and then he'll turn around and get you, he'll get you. So you gotta be a bit careful. And the idea is, yeah, you, you bring it back to daylight and then work out the next puzzle. There's also, yeah, so that's that's where I'm at at the moment. That's what I'm thinking. This bit on it, I wanna try out. I wanna make it a bit more, I don't know, a bit more interesting. I might add, add a sort of survival element to the game as well, because it's quite a big island now. So maybe you need to keep um, you know, keep yourself nourished, eating veggies and whatnot and filtering water. I kind of like the idea where I went with my last build with meditation as well. So all this crazy stuff's going on. Maybe you just need to sit down at times and um, get your thoughts in order. There's this bunker I put in as well, which is going to have a computer in it. It's got a computer in it. It just doesn't quite work yet. Uh, <clears throat> and also, this bunker, for whatever reason, hits the uh, F FPS big time. So that's bloody annoying. Got to work that one out. But you can see it's a much bigger island now. Um, I'll get I'll get some animals wandering around. Oh, right, yeah, the fragments are falling from the sky because it's there's no like level control at the moment. It doesn't know what level you are nor what order of, of events are happening. Uh, yeah, so some animals. I'll get the camera back in as well so you can take some photos. Uh, where's the bunker gone? Did I just walk right past it? I did, didn't I? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, also, I'll show you something else I've done. In... Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. There is a bunker in there. For whatever reason, my terrain, it reset after like hours of remodeling it it reset and then filled everything back in and uh, piss me. so i need to go do that again anyway let's get rid of that for now another thing that i did which i didn't have on the first version is i'm thinking you'll be able to choose a hard called mode or standard mode when you launch the game hard called mode you'll just have to figure out what to do and, and in what order the other mode is going to have this compass. <laughs> Believe me, that's a compass. That points to your objective. So that big white box is my current objective. Um, and that box will position itself wherever the player needs to be. It won't tell you what to do, but it'll tell you like around here there's something that you need to, to do. And if we run up the hill for a second, an example of current objective. Let's get up here. Oh yeah, the compass. Oh, I need to put the torch back in as well. Yeah, it's cool, it's cool. We'll just go, go up here, there's a little pillbox. Pillbox sits by the way of like old uh, defense. Old World War II defense units built of concrete. They look nothing like this, they look <laughs> a lot more interesting. Uh, but yeah, the physics side of thing now as well, because I've got that going. So you can grab objects, you can press and hold to throw, and the, the longer you hold, uh, the more power you put behind stuff. You can rotate things as well. I think it's on the, uh, yeah, it's only one axis at the moment. I need to work out how to do that. But there's boxes here that you can, you know, you can rotate around. Plonk. Plonk. Maybe you want to get up there, some L. Uh, this is another puzzle as well. Again, all very placeholder, but whatever. This isn't the real pin, by the way, but that isn't the real animation. Again, it's all, as you can tell, it's all placeholder. Just 
get the mechanics in place and come and sort that shit out later. Um, hmm. So that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. Loads going on. Much bigger island, which I thought was a good idea to begin with. But I mean, I got to make I got to make walking from A to B a bit more interesting. And I've been thinking about things like Death Stranding, you know, where you got to balance. You know, that's basically A to B. You know, taking a box from A to B, but you got to balance it. And then I was thinking, well, maybe uh, the the sort of survival element might come into play, where if I have a stress bar or health bar, you have to keep your health and stress correct. Um, I do like the idea of things falling out of the sky and perhaps making it a bit tricky for you to navigate around the island. Um, Sci-fi wise, I'm now sort of leaning towards more of a Halo style, I guess, rather than what I was going for before, which was more of um, an organic type of Halo, uh, Halo feel, uh, alien feel, sci-fi feel. But this is, a, I'm just playing at the moment. I don't. Just need to get like the, f the, f the first. I think once I've once once I've completed this night zone, whatever that might be, um, I think that's good enough to then sort of like really tidy up a, a bit more and just get people to play that sort of flow, so that you get used to like the mechanics of picking up stuff and and like as I say like the physical side of things. You've got the story, so you you know there's a bit a bit more context as to what's going on and then there's the sci-fi side and the survival element side whatever that might be and then i think yeah i might at that point start asking people for feedback and then go from there anyway i, th I think for tonight that is it it's just a quick update really and i hope you've enjoyed it do let me know what you think you can leave comments below or uh, go on Twitter. Follow me on Twitter. And yeah, thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye-bye.